next speaker is Oscar Garcia Pineda, who uh, unfortunately couldn't make it here, so he um, is going to um, present remotely. And he is currently the director of the environmental consulting firm Water Mapping, and has also worked with Dr. Ian McDonald at Florida State as part of the uh, Gomer Consortia Deep Sea and Eco Gig. Uh, and his work involves using different types of technology from satellites to drones to help detect and determine the path of oil on the ocean's surface. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you, um, Dr. Garcia, and go ahead and start your presentation, please. Thank you, Monica. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. And I uh, apologize for not being able to be there. I wish I could be there, but uh, at least we can I'll try to share some inter interesting content for you and see if uh, you can see some value on this information. I'm going to show you how we use a, a UAS or drones into tactical oil spills response operations. And the work I'm going to show you here is basically work that has been done in collaboration with my colleagues from NOAA, BESI, EPA, and the University of South Florida. Um, okay. So uh, if, if we think about the drones and we think about uh, oil spills, uh, I think uh, an easy way to, to classify the, the utilization of, of drones is on these three different areas, monitoring, response, or assessment. And if we think about everything we wish to have on a drone that will be monitoring, so these are the qualifications and response and assessment. So what I'm going to be focusing today is on these two parts, on, on how we use drones and how I, how I use drones for response or for assessment. Uh, for response, I, I uh, basically will rely on telemetry, uh, real-time video broadcast, durability, uh, drones that could fly under, under a, a range of operation conditions, etc. And for assessment, we refer to, to drones capable of uh, collecting data that can be geotagged and, and that can be fly for, for long periods of time. All right, so uh, this is uh, just an example of the type of, of drones that I use, uh, that I use on the field. Uh, so for example, we have here the, uh, the uh, uh, we have a, I normally use a, a drone that has a capability to, to, to reproduce high video quality. And, and flies very fast, like the Inspire that I have there. And then I'm holding here a drone that is uh, waterproof, and this drone I have used to collect samples. And then I use a larger drone as well that where I can use, uh, where I can mount multi, multi sensors and, and collect uh, different types of imagery. So why we use these drones? Well, because always from the sea level, we cannot get the, the, uh, the level of detail that we can see from the air. And what we are looking to use the drones are for identifying these areas on this field that can uh, be of interest to either responders or for assessment. So having the ability to see these type of images on real time from, from a responding vessel is crucial to see how we can position the boat on a tactical way to operate the tasks that we have in hand. For example, either to we, we might want to sample the thick oil or, or maybe position the boat where it can skim the area, or even position different types of boats that, that, that are going to contain the oil or, or deploy a booming or, or, or such a thing. So other things that I have done uh, recently, well, it was actually a couple of years ago, we started looking into developing a, a sampler uh, for, uh, that could be mounted on a drone and the idea was, okay, so we deploy a drone that could have a sampler, and uh, the drone has a down-looking camera, and the photo here is cut it because this, this is a tether of about 30 to 50 feet long, uh, so obviously the picture will not show the detail if, if we show the, the, the long tether. But basically there is a, there is a sampling, uh, there is a sampler hanging on the bottom of the drone, and then the drone. It's a little bit impractical, but it's possible uh, to basically fly the drone, deploy the drone with a down-looking camera, locate the thick oil, and then decide if, if you want to uh, uh, lower this sampler into the surface, and it will collect different types of, of samples. So this, these samples could be either for chemical analysis, for just the composition itself, or also for, for measuring the thickness. Uh, yeah, and this is what my good friend Ian said about when I talked to him about the idea of sampling 
oil with drones. He remind me about the idea of delivering pizzas with drones as well. Um, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, I'm going to show you now a video. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do this and see if it works. Uh, so this this video is an example of, of uh, the. Oh, this is not the video I want to show you. Sorry for that. Uh, let me see. Is this video here? Yeah. So this video is going to show examples of how we how we have used the drones to operate on the field. What we are doing here, for example, is we we deploy the drone and we now we have a real time video that shows how the oil is moving, where where the target of, of, of a thick patch of oil is moving, how we how we need to drift. So it really helps us to have a a a visual of the of the oil how it's moving and how we can proceed with the task. Another application is the mapping of course. So for mapping uh, any time during the footage of, of the video you can stop the video, collect your telemetry and then produce a map uh, and, and and then uh, as well do classifications of oil. So uh, as you can see, this video keeps on going. And there, is, there are some techniques for doing the mapping, and it's, 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 it could be complicated at some point. But anyway, so this what you're seeing now is another example of applications um, we use. Or, yes, Oscar, we cannot see yes. the video. Um, is the video playing on your side, on your screen? Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. It might be. It might be on a raw. On. Do you have a double monitor? No, it's it's not. Um, oh, hold on a second. Let me stop sharing. Now I'm gonna do the sharing again. I know what's happening. It, it, the webex now. Oh, oh. Okay. We now we see it. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry, yes, the WebEx uh, asks you to select which application you want to share. It's not only sharing your desktop, but you need to say exactly which application. Sorry for that. Anyway, so as I was saying now, uh, as you are seeing now on the screen, uh, so these are visuals of, of the aerial video that you receive on the on the vessel when, when you are using the drones to operate. And, and what you are seeing now, uh, do you see the boat floating on the ocean with uh, with oil around? Monica? Yes. Okay. Yes, so okay, so now you're seeing there how how the video collects a, a, a shot where a, any of those shots can be extracted from the video and using the telemetry on the on the drone uh, we can generate maps of of the of the oil itself. Uh, and and of course this can be done on any on any uh, uh, second during the video, as he's looking on Nadir, which is on direction straight down, basically from, from the air. Now we are seeing thermal imagery, so that's how we use thermal imagery to as well position the boat strategically. And and that thermal imagery comes very handy when there are some uh, 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 lighting, uh, some illumination conditions that are not appropriate to identify the oil. Um, so here, for example, more, more examples of thermal imagery. Uh, they are uh, sometimes when when there is no enough illumination, the oil comes up very nicely on thermal imagery. Uh, and, and I've been working lately more and more with these uh, sensors because they can really be useful for for uh, detecting the thick oil. Um, another application here is, for example, here. Um, uh, as you can see, the boat is, is moving. It doesn't look that it's moving too fast from the air, but I can tell you it was moving very fast from the from the field. And, uh, and and it's important to have drones that can fly very fast. It takes a lot of practice, I have to say. I have more than maybe 200 missions on, on the field successfully, and it takes a lot of practice to fly the drones on the field, but uh, it, uh, these are just examples of, of that some things that can be possibly done with the drones. Um, so I'm just gonna let this keep on going. Yeah, so then another thing we have developed is uh, we, we've been trying to develop algorithms that can read the video itself and develop some uh, semi-automatic feature detection. Uh, they are, um, it's possible, we stopped developing, but that's other things that, we, that we've been exploring doing. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna have to go back and then share my other. Do you see the PowerPoint on the bottom? Nope. 
No, no. you have to share your no? other okay. screen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to stop this sharing and then share again to my <laughs> presentation. Okay. I think now you see. Well, I'm going you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make it easier. I think it's going to be easier to, to just stay on, on, on the Google Chrome. Sorry for that. Bear with me for a second. Okay, so but can you see the YouTube now? Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is uh, recent work that I've been doing uh, along with Bessie uh, and my colleagues from NOAA, EPA, and, and U University of South Florida. We uh, developed a system uh, that could be mounted on a drone. This is a multispectral system uh, that it, it holds multiple cameras. I'm going to post the video here. So what you are seeing here on, on your upper right is the, the sensors. Uh, they are two different uh, uh, sensors that we integrated into uh, a system that is mounted now on a UAS. So we have all these different bands, and, and what we tried to do here at the University of South, of South Florida was to calibrate these, these bands under the specific thicknesses for three different oils to see the differences. So what you are going to see on this video is how we collect, we basically uh, produce all these layers of oils at these different thicknesses, and we expose those those uh, thicknesses into the lenses of of these uh, sensors. And what you are seeing here, for example, is is how the the imagery comes back from the sensor. So so you get the visual RGB, the thermal emissivity, and then all these channels that go from UV to to infrared, uh, and 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 we we apply. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Sorry. So as you can see here, so we we try a different with different points with different demultiplication, and and uh, it was quite. Uh, learning experience to see uh, how different oils behave so differently. I mean, it's, it's, it's very astonish astonishing to see not only the spectral response, but also the physical behavior of different oils. For example, what you're seeing here is how IFO uh, behaves in contrast with uh, ANS, for example. It's just the, the spreading velocity, uh, the, the spreading capa capacity, the viscoelastic properties, the thermal, the reflection, it, it, it's very different to, to work with one oil versus another oil. So that's something uh, um, I have learned that we have to invest a lot more time, not only focusing on one single oil, but in many oils. And here, I'm going to close this video here for a second. I just want to show you. So the multispectral camera here is looking at all these different features, and we have water, we have an oil, uh, oil a, a, a dark feature, and we use this dead vegetation to simulate oil uh, on the water. And then we have vegetation, we have sand, we have trees. We have these panels that are calibrated into a specific wavelength, and we use those to, to, to see how the, the different channels on the camera were uh, precisely identifying this, the wavelengths of, of, this, of these channels. And here's just a closer look. Now, the, the, what you're looking actually is, is the cameras mounted on the drone itself. I was piloting the drone while my colleagues were placing the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the squares, and they are spaced at a given distance. And then what you're seeing now on the screen is just how all the imagery from all the different bands comes along. And, uh, and well, it, it's, there is so much detail on and each of these, pan, uh, each of these uh, different sensors, but um, if you pay close attention, you will see that some features show up uh, on, on more than in, in, in different bands than others. The point of doing this actually is just to see in which bands we can see better different levels of emulsifications or we can discern oil emulsions from other things. Um, anyway, so that, that was the purpose of this experiment. And uh, I'm just going to forward this a little bit. And here as well, we have our colleague Xiao Ji. It's a, it's a PhD candidate from the University of South Florida. Here, um, 
it, 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 going through these panels, you can see the differences, how, how different bands react strongly to vegetation more than other things. So before going into my PowerPoint, I'm going to stick here to YouTube. I'm going to show you another uh, drone, new drone uh, technology that we've been using. So now we have ROVs that we integrated sensors on the ROV. Uh, this is a parameter, and we also have water samplers and sensors like depth, depth sensors and salinity, turbidity, etc. So what we the purpose of having this instrument is to combine the the ROV with the UAS to as well as strategically deploy the ROV on on areas where we see thick oil or thick emulsions and uh, measure uh, or identify the level of oil concentration underneath the plume at different at different depths and as well to collect samples of oil of, of water. So we are doing that to understand uh, how much entrapment of oil uh, is under under the slick uh, when the slick is, you know, sheens or different levels of, of uh, thicknesses or more. So, okay, I'm gonna let this video keep going. This was an experiment that we did at onset a couple of weeks ago, and as I'm showing there, the the sample, the the ROV has a sampler, and then we can extract the samples. That that can be uh, seen. I mean, the, the fluorometry is good, but but the fluorometry has to be also validated by the what by the water sampler uh, to make sure that we are looking at uh, peaks of related to oil and not to other things. All right, so I'm going to stop this, and then I'm going to go switch to PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. PowerPoint, here it is. Sure. Okay, so going back to this presentation. Um, okay, we show all of these. Now, so uh, this is a, a test that we did recently at onset. Uh, so we took our multispectral drone, and now here is hanged on a crane. The reason for that is because uh, there were some restrictions on the Navy base that we cannot, we could, we, we couldn't fly the drones for safety restrictions. And, but we found a way to actually use a crane to hang the drone and actually just uh, get as much, uh, uh, just the same, the same data that we will get, we will be flying the drone. Anyway, so uh, this is an example of, of what I was trying to tell you. So we put the squares with one meter uh, uh, of area, and then we set different thicknesses of the same oil. And then we actually, uh, uh, my colleagues from, from University of South Korea were, fortunate to bring all the way to New Jersey some sargassum from the old Mexico. And we uh, uh, just mix sargassum with, uh, just with, with the water, and then with, uh, we mix it with, with some oil. And then we look at the, we look at the multispectral data, and then we see again how each of the channels sees different things. As you can see here, for example, even, even when the visual, the visual data doesn't show and I'm going to go back. You 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 will struggle to see if there is any oil on this on these panels at all by just looking straight down from the air into regular RGB. But as you are seeing into, for example, the thermal thermal information, you can see that thermal is is seen where 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 some signature variance that that is related to to those thicknesses. And then we have uh, you know each of the different different uh, channels. Which well, what we have found is that the the short part of the spectrum helps us to detect thin oils, and it's, it's hard to see here. But anyway, um, just I just wanted to show you this contrast: how it looks the UV at the healthy or or damaged sargassum across the spectrum, and and that's the main application of using the uh, the longer wave uh, sensors to discern uh, how uh, different levels of emulsifications and different other features can be identified or, or discerned. So basically that's what I have. Uh, I, I felt like I was rushing a little bit, but uh, um, I hope uh, you could get the message. I want to stop here and see if anybody has any questions. Yes, just for me. Anybody have any questions? Just Yeah. Uh, All right. 
Uh, what kind of what's um, they, there's a question in the room, but they want to know what company your hyperspectral camera was from. Oh, uh, I'm using two cameras. I'm actually using three cameras. I, the photo here, I'm using a Minka Sense. It, this is a reddish camera that you can get out of the counter. Um, uh, it's a very basic a standard configuration that I got from them. Um, it has pros and cons, and then I use, I'm using uh, this other brand, it's called Mapir, and I use this, this, this brand because they could uh, specifically make these filters at the specific wavelengths I asked them. This is called Mapir. And then I used another one that I, that's called Plant Range, uh, which was very good uh, as well, and I am testing another one that's called, but anyway, so to answer the question, these are the cameras that are, that are here, and, 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 and this, uh, I'll be happy to, to give you more information about the cameras if you write me an email. Okay. Here's my, Do you have any other here's my email. Any other questions? Any questions online? No? Okay. Uh, well, thank all you right. all here for, um, for all your, uh, for your presentation, and we appreciate you uh, um, doing it remotely so to make sure we could get some of this great information into the room. So, um, Thank you, Monica. On that note